ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टायु भद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter One, Verse Twelve. Suta jana si bhadram te Bhagavan satvatam pati hi devakyam usu devasya jato yasya chikirshaya. सूतर जानासी भद्रम थे भगवान सात्वताम पति ही देवक्याम वसुदेवश्च जातो यश्च चिकिर्षया सूतर जानासी भद्रम थे भगवान सात्वताम पति ही देवक्याम वसुदेवश्च जातो यश्च चिकिर्षया Synonyms, word by word translation. Suta, O Suta Goswami, Jana si, you know, Bhadram te, all blessings upon you. Bhagawan, the personality of Godhead, Satvatam, of the pure devotees, Patihi, protector, Devakyam, in the womb of Devaki. वसुदेवश्च माय वसुदेव जातः बोर्न ऑफ यश्च फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ चिकित्सया एक्सेक्यूटिंग ट्रांसलेशन एंड परफॉर्म बाय शीला परवाल ऑल ब्लेसिंग्स अपॉन यू ओ सुत गुस्वामी यू नो फॉर व्हाट पर्पस द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड अपीयर्ड इन द वूम्ब ऑफ देवकी एज अ सन ऑफ वसुदेव Purport. Bhagawan means the Almighty God, who is the controller of all opulence, power, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. He is the protector of his pure devotees. Although God is equally disposed to everyone, he is especially inclined to his devotees. Sat means the absolute truth. And the persons who are servitors of the absolute truth are called satvatas. And the personality of Godhead, who protects such pure devotees, is known as the protector of the satvatas. Bhadram te, or blessings upon you, indicates the sage's anxiety to know the absolute truth from the speaker. Lord Sri Krishna. The supreme personality of Godhead appeared to Devaki, the wife of Vasudev. Vasudev is the symbol of the transcendental position wherein the appearance of the supreme Lord takes place. Jaya Om Ajnana Kiranda Sha Yana Anjana Shalakaya Akshuru Mujatamjena Tasmai Shpe Guru Vedamaha सागर जातम सहगण रघुनाथानुतव साधवैत सवधूत पिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सहगण रिता श्री विशाखा नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष सुन्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश कारिणे 
ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತತ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಋಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಅತೀತಾ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ್ ಆದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ Hare Krishna and welcome everyone this Saturday evening uh, chat plus Srimad Bhagavatam uh, chapter a day and this is wonderful that all of you have assembled here that's pretty much same as the, the sages said the name is Sarnya only that I am not this this is the Swami here but we are reading the the beautiful translation of purpose of our Srila Prabhupada who has made it so um, presentable, so understandable for us at our levels. So we are all grateful to Srila Prabhupada uh, for giving us this nectar and uh, making it available for us, all of us. Anywhere in the world, so many languages, everywhere the Bhagavatam is being spoken and discussed by the devotees. There's never a time when Bhagavatam is not being discussed all over the world because if you go around the clock, Prabhupada has made an arrangement in every town and village, every country, every time zone where Bhagavatam is being discussed at one or the other time. So that is Nityam, Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya. So by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we are having the facility and, and uh, the... Um, resources and all the all the all the devotees were able to guide guide us and help us in in reading and understanding shrimad bhagavatam so the verse today uh, this is the series of questions that the sages have started asking sutta goswami and this is the third question in the series there will be total six questions so if we go to the um, so the first question is uh yes the number 9 please therefore being blessed with many years explain to us in an easily understandable way we all want that what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for the people in general so what is the absolute and ultimate good for the people in general is the first question this is nature of the sages they they are always worried about or they are always compassionate to the people in general so they are asking what's good for people in general who are the people in general people like us and then then he says in the 11th verse just the verse before today's verse therefore he says please select the essence of all these scriptures and explain it to for explain it for the good of all living beings that by such instruction their hearts may be fully satisfied right so what is good for people in general and what is that essence of scriptures there are so many scriptures it is practically impossible for today's day and time with the with the lifespan of kaliyuga to be able to read and grasp and understand all the scriptures that are available in the in the vedic uh, philosophy or in the vedic dharma but how the sages are helping us is asking shila sutta goswami to present the essence just like we have a large fruit we can't possibly eat so we but if we can be squeezed into uh, juice or like honey nectar then we can get the essence of all that 
So what is that nectar? What is the essence of all the scriptures? And hearing which the living entity's hearts may be fully satisfied. That's, that's what we lack in general. Particularly, this is being, this, this is Yajna being done just at the beginning of Kali Yuga. And they know that the, uh, the hearts of the people in general in Kali Yuga will always be disturbed. They always feel less satisfied because the more the materialism, the less the satisfaction. The nature of the soul is quite opposite. Like the soul is spirit, and the matter is matter. The spiritual uh, need cannot be fulfilled by the material resources. So that's why we are spirits and we need the spiritual nectar to satisfy our, our hearts. Then we come to today's verse. And now this is a indirect way of asking question. This is it's amazing how they're saying all blessings upon you. So they, the Prabhupada says in the uh, purport that the, the sages are in anxiety. Yeah, so it says, Bhadramte, blessings upon you indicates the sages' anxiety to know the absolute truth from the speaker. So they're giving all that they have. Now all the blessings to you, Sutta Goswami, all the blessings to you, please, please tell us. Yeah, please tell us why did the Supreme Personality of God had appeared in the womb of Devaki as the son of Vasudev. They want to know this. What happened? Why, what was the reason? Yeah, so this is uh, coming out of the heart, the blessings, you know, because they are in need, they're in anxiety. So what, was, what happened? And this is just after Krishna had left. And uh, the, and this is, uh, I think, I don't know how many years, just a little bit after that. Um, then um, what is particularly of interest for this today's verse is uh, a few things. Um, first is Prabhupada says, as in the purport right from the beginning, Bhagavan means the almighty God who is the controller of all opulence, yes. power, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. I don't this know what your name Six opulences, power, fame, beauty, knowledge, and this is uh, this is how Bhagwan is defined. So I'm going to share a little presentation now. So uh, I hope everyone can see my screen. I'm just going to present. In the play mode. Yeah. Right. So the first, uh, if you see the definition, uh, the yeah, Bhagwan. The definition of Bhagwan. So, how is the Lord uh, addressed here? Bhagwan Satvatam Pati. Yeah. So Bhagavan Satvatampati. So this is the, if you if you like, this is a what we call a resume in today's world. If I apply for a job, I need to you know show my credentials, like what degree I have done, from where did I study, did I do Cambridge or Oxford or somewhere else, or maybe in US, um, some Stanford, some big university, you know, like. What is my capacity? So the Lord is addressed as Bhagwan. Yeah. So why is why is that important? What is Bhagwan? What does Bhagwan mean? Bhagwan means the Almighty God, who is the controller of all opulence, power, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. These are the six categories in which you can pretty pretty much place anything and everything. There is nothing beyond this that anyone can desire to have. Yeah. And someone who has it fully, fully, he is Bhagavan. Bhagavan means someone who has, has it, who possesses. Yeah. And Bhaga, Bhaga means a collection of these six opulences. This is how the Lord is 
uh, differentiated between the people in general or even the higher entities, living entities like even the sages or the demigods. Of all the, all the people in the world, all the personalities, Krishna is the supreme personality and Bhagavan. So why is that? So uh, this was explained, the, the six qualities of Bhagavan has been explained by uh, Parasha Rishi uh, within Vishnu Puran. Parasha, does anyone know who Parasha is? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, it is father of Vyasadeva. Father of Vyasadeva, yes. Vyasadeva. Parasharatma Jamvande. This is there is also in uh, there is no where this is written. Parasharatma Jamvande. Sukam Tata Param maybe. This is in the uh, Vishnu Sarsanam also where it is explained. This, this is when this is glorifying Vyasadeva. Parashara, Atmaja, Atmaja means son, Parashara's son. And so Vyasadeva is the son of Parasha. And Parasha is the son of, does anyone know? Shakte, Shakte. And his father, Shakte, his father is Vasishta. This is how the, the lineage is. And, and Vyasadeva's son is? So Parashar Rishi has done the more bulk of the compilation of Vishnu Puran. And he describes uh, the, the definition of Bhagavan or Bhag as Aishwarasya Samagrasya Viryasya Yashasya Sriya Jnana Veda Gayos Chayva Sannama Bhaga Itirana Aishwarasya Samagrasya. Samagrasya means fully. Fully is what? Like just, if you fill a glass with water and you cannot fill it anymore. You know, there's, when you fill the glass, there's normally we leave some space. Yeah. There's something left, like anything we see. I mean, it's never full. Like you buy any bottles in the supermarket or you, you, you get a glass of water, you get whatever. It's never full. There's always some left but this is like full there's not a single drop can be added in that glass of water just like that the opulences of the supreme lord of bhagwan is that that there's nothing more than that that is possible for anyone unlimited in our perception it is unlimited the six glorious opulences namely wealth so krishna has unlimited wealth how is the unlimited wealth Krishna has? Why, how does he have unlimited wealth? Because Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhu, Matta Sarvam Pravartate. Everything has come from him. So something that has come from him belongs to him. And, and who is the goddess of fortune? And what is she doing? The goddess of fortune herself is, is serving Krishna. So Krishna has the unlimited wealth. And Krishna has the unlimited strength. How do you define unlimited strength? There is a, um, always some people, you know, with some curious minds. And uh, one time Prabhupada was giving a class and explaining this particular uh, Worse and not worse, in this, but this particular aspect of Bhagavan. And he said, Krishna has unlimited strength. And then there was one, you know, he thought he was very intelligent. And he asked a question to, to Srila Prabhupada saying, if, if Krishna has unlimited strength, can he, and then you're saying that he can also, you know, he can do anything. Can he create something that he can't? Lift like can he create a, a mountain that he can't lift? You know, this is a tricky question, isn't it? Like, if if Prabhupada says, or you know, like he was trying to, to, to catch, you know, like if you say that God can not create something, that means God is limited, God has to be unlimited. But God can create something, but then he can't lift that to mountain, that means God is limited. 
So this is like a catch-22 situation. Does anyone know what was Prabhupada's answer? Hare Krishna Prabhu? Yes, sir. Um, he can create it and then immediately after lift it. Yes. And why is that? Oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Because uh, God is unlimited. And yes. All God is un and sorry. And full in all opulences. Yes, there is one more aspect to it, Prabhu. And God is ever expanding. His capacity, his, his strength is ever expanding. He's ever expanding. So, so he initially expanded to create something that he cannot lift. And then immediately, because he's constantly expanding, his strength is constantly you know, increasing. Immediately, as you said, in the next moment, his strength was enough to lift it as well. That's, the, that's, that's our God. He's constantly, it's not that a stagnant, you know, like, okay, this is, a, this is someone who can do this much, and that's it. This is a, a constant expansion of, of Lord's wealth and strength and fame. That's why it's like unlimited. It never decreases. It's always increasing. A Lord's pastimes are always increasing. And uh, Anantadev, you know, the he's, he's constantly is glorifying. He's chanting the glories of the Lord, but he can never end. He can never finish because by the time he's he's chanted the glories, the God, God has got some Krishna has got some more glories to, to sing about. And this is this is the the aspect of unlimitedness. Yes, yeah, so that's Krishna's unlimited strength, and his fame is unlimited. You know, this is amazing. Everywhere, from a little child to to everyone is able to connect to Krishna in any aspect any relationship and that's how he's so famous and his beauty his beauty like when we when we go to the temple we see the beauty of the, the deities how deities are beautifully dressed beautifully dressed his beauty is unlimited even krishna was mesmerized by his own beauty one time it says that uh, and then his knowledge is unlimited then then you know in bhagavad gita what does krishna says about vedesya sarva am eva vedyo so Krishna's knowledge is unlimited. From him only the Vedas have come. Yeah, there's nothing beyond the Vedas. And any example of his renunciation? Like how is... So someone can say, you know, this like all these things are like, a, in a way, it's like a positive strength. Like a wealth is, is, is uh, some, you have it. Strength, you have it. Fame, someone has it. Beauty, some and the knowledge also, but he's also the he also has the the opulence of renunciation. Because someone can say if if someone you know like renunciation has a lot of power. If you see, have you seen like renunciates like the who are the renunciates? They have some attraction. Do we agree? Like then we have so many. Um, wonderful brahmacharis of sannyasis when they come we can see the attraction right so they have they because they are renunciates they renounce everything they they get some opulence in that sense they get attraction so similarly krishna has unlimited renunciation as well and how did he show his renunciation can anyone say that how do you say krishna is, is also has renunciation Any example that you can think of that Krishna has shown his renunciation? So when Krishna was in Vrindavan. Is it the Gopis, probably? Yeah. When he left Vrindavan, there was no need for him to live in Vrindavan, right? Yes. <laughs> he was in a perfect situation. And... Uh, they were having, he was having fun all the time. But then what happens? He goes, he leaves all that and he goes to Mathura to, and then he kills Kansa and he starts killing all these other, you know, Atatais or the, the demons. And then he's just constantly doing that, what he has come for, you know, constantly killing all these um, Duskritanas or the, the, the uh, miscreants. Yeah? And that's his renunciation. 
there is nothing beyond this that is possible. Yeah, his his wealth. This we, we can't imagine fully, but if we could imagine, someone has everything in the world. Someone has every and you know, all the strength and inconceivable in a way. We can we can only try and you know think about it and say, wow, this is Bhagawan. Because it's very important to understand the, the capacity of the Lord. As I was saying before, this is, if we if we introduce someone, you know, just like I was saying before, uh, okay, he's the individual, let's say he's the CEO of a company, or he is, you know, he's a prime minister of a country, or someone like what qualities he has, or he studied in this school or that college, he did this and that. And he's managed this. He has, you know, created a big empire. He could be um, Elon Musk of Tesla and this and that. So you can say, okay, this is something that someone has achieved in this material world. Now, how do you define Krishna's achievements? Everything is everything belongs to him. So, so where do you start and where do you finish with that? So that is Bhagwan. That's how Krishna is Bhagwan. He's addressed as Bhagwan in this verse. And Rishi is the. What are they trying to? to ask a question, so that was here before, sorry. What he says, you know for what purpose the personality of Godhead, this is what is the uh, Sanskrit here there? Bhagavan Satvatam Pati. So Prabhupada is um, packed that in personality of Godhead, yeah? For what purpose Bhagavan Satvatam Pati has appeared in the womb of Devaki, right? So this is, Indirect way of asking a question, right? You know for what purpose? Yeah, so this is not another question. Interestingly, they were saying, please tell us, please tell us what is the essence, please tell us what is uh, what is best. But here they are saying, indirect question, you know what purpose the person of God had appeared in the womb of Devaki as the son of today. So they want to know that. Yeah, so this is now the second aspect of this verse where Lord is addressed is. Satvatampati. Yeah. Bhagavan Satvatampati. So Bhagavan, the one more aspect of Bhagavan, so what is other there are three aspects of transcendence. There is uh, in Bhagavatam, in the second chapter, this this is very famous verse, Vadantita Tattva Vidas, Tattva Med Gyanam Advayam, Brahmati, Paramat Meti, Bhagavan Iti Sabdhite. The God or the transcendence is understood in three ways. This is Brahman. There is Paramatma and there is Bhagwan. So Brahman is where there is there is no the Brahman means God in his unmanifested form or in his uh, impersonal form. Yeah. And Paramatma is within sitting in everyone's heart. And Bhagwan is the personality of the Supreme Personality of God. That is Bhagwan. So this is like if you do gradation, like gradation Brahman, Brahman. And then from there goes Paramatma in everyone's heart. And Bhagavan Brahman and Paramatma is to do with the material creation. Yeah, Brahman, like in every atom, there is Brahman. Right? Yeah? He's, Vishnu is, is, is present in every atom. Paramatma is Paramatma is he is present in everyone's heart. As Bhagavan, he he has all these, so he's he has the opulence, like just like the sun god has the sun rays. Yeah. Same way, Bhagwan has this of this you know attribute of Brahman from him. The effulgence of Brahman is coming. Yeah, that some people say God is light. So that light is whose light is it? That is Bhagwan's light, and Bhagwan appears as Paramatma in everyone's heart. That is Bhagwan. So this is the if you do the gradation, Bhagwan is at the top. The last word in transcendence is Bhagwan, which denotes the supreme personality of God. So so this clears our aspect, or slightly you know. Um, and we get the clue when we all had the clue, but just to, to bring that back as to what is Bhagawan. Yeah, so to bring the essence of the, the point that we're trying to make today. And then the next aspect is Satvatam Pati. So Prabhupada explains Satvatam means Satvata. Who are these Sat? Swatam. The so Satvatas, Prabhupada says that uh, Sat means the absolute truth. Yeah, Sat Chit Anand. Like Sat is the absolute truth. So that is Satvatas, who always believe in the who are always part of the absolute truth, who believes in that, who, who worship the absolute truth. Sat. And Satvatam. So Sat Sat is the absolute truth, the God Himself. And Satvatam are the Satvatas are the servitors of the absolute truth. 
who are always worshipping and serving the absolute truth are satvatas and krishna now bhagwan satvata satvatam patihi patihi is the the protector yeah so this like uh, now we actually know like in, in hindi they said pati patni the the true meaning of pati is what protector so it's a lot of uh, no uh, <laughs> for the husbands they need to understand what actually it means the protector and bhagwan is the protector of of everyone but particularly his pure devotees his devotees so prabhupa says in in the purport here although god is equally disposed to everyone he is especially inclined to his devotees does this recall any verse from bhagavad gita to anyone god is equal to everyone but a little inclined to his devotees in the ninth chapter the verse samoham sarva bhuteshu name dveshyoshti na priya ye jad ye bhajanti tu mam bhaktya mai te teshu chapya ham so i and we know once so, samoham sarva bhuteshu is meant i am equal to everyone sam samo samo means equal equally disposed samoham i am equal to sarva bhuteshu to everyone na dveshosti na priya so i have no dvesh dvesh means i have no uh, hate hatefulness uh, or hatred for anyone and neither no anyone is you know like more dear to me so, so lord is is equal how is can anyone say how is lord equal to everyone any ideas that we can experience that is that lord coming? is in, yeah lord is in everyone's heart yes is everyone's heart yes he's part of like every small insect or you know a crocodile or elephant or whoever it is yes. lord is there in human everyone yes that's one thing and then but how does he not differ? yeah that's wonderful point and then also in terms of if you see even in the terms of arrangement that he is made like the rain you know he rains everywhere <laughs> some of the areas in this world does not rain but that's another subject but there is the in, within let's say within the country there may be some people who are not so pious some people are pious some are believers in god non believers whoever it is it does not differentiate okay on this house i will rain and this that i will not rain the every is rains everywhere in this country at least and also in terms of sunlight if you see the sunlight the sun is, is equally disposed to everyone the sun is not differentiating between a nice place you know nice water and lake and garden or it is like a filthy place the sun is equal and when even the sun's heat is equal sun heat does not get contaminated but it does it can evaporate even the dirty water or also the clean water it is equally potent everywhere so krishna's that's how the krishna's uh, uh, mercy is to everyone but for the devotees he especially a uh, special heart because this is quite natural that's how that's how he is a person see the difference between the people who do not understand krishna as a person they cannot understand this aspect because it is a personal choice like krishna wears yellow dhoti because he likes yellow dhoti right? he is a taste he is a taste for so many things like this like that right so this is that's how he is person and and um, then that's that's how the 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 differentiation is not there and also there and bhagavatam pati is like he's the protector now mo say bhagwan satvatam pati sorry so bhagwan satvat now who can protect now the, what is more you know stronger point to understand is like even if someone wants to protect they may not be able to protect but someone a person who has all these opulences and and if we take shelter of that kind of person or that person then we are assured like because he owns everything he has all the strength he is the most famous he is most beautiful he has all the knowledge and he is you know he has all the renunciation then there is nothing left for us to to doubt that if i take 
this person's shelter you know whether i will be protected or not is that does make sense like if if we if we take shelter of someone who does not have all these qualities then there is some doubt right so when we hire and then going back to the example of a uh, as a resume let's say you hiring someone or you are appointing someone or someone is you know uh, selecting a a husband or a wife or whatever you know you look for certain aspects right and certain you know um features but here there's everything in there and when you when we look at the aspect of protection this is the ultimate protection everyone looking for and uh, there is a beautiful uh, example there are many examples can can we quickly go through some examples where krishna has protected his devotees is it parikshit maharaj parikshit maharaj yes this is the beginning of bhagavatam mm-hmm. pralad maharaj protected by narsingha dev mm-hmm. Yes, this, this, how many times and how many ways Pallad Maharaj was protected by, protected by uh, Nasimha Dev. And, and, and when before he appeared at Nasimha Dev, like he was, Pallad was thrown from the mountain, he was put under the uh, elephant, he was poisoned, he was he put in the fire, all sorts of situation. Pallad was never in anxiety. It was Hiranya Kashyap who was in more anxiety than Pallad. This was amazing. So because Pallad has full faith in that, in the production. That's right. get down into a plank position the clock thing cross over toe touches <laughs> anyone else captain no ambarish maharaj dropti ambarish mara draupadi yes so many example yes. pandavas pandavas yes gajendra gajendra fantastic thank you so much who said that gajendra so what's your name prabhu your servant chandra chaitanya hare krishna <laughs> my master chandra chaitanya bhu ki jai fantastic example so we will who was a gajendra was a elephant right and do we know the past time of gajendra like in the previous birth he was a a king and in, he was in the demna in the demna yes he was cursed gajendra mm-hmm. even being elephant he remembered when it was time that you know he he had no other way to go no one else to look at he prays and then the lord appears and then they say said the lord appears on the garuda and by the prayer the lord is just telling garuda come on fast fast you know he he can't he can't wait that he he just is calling us he's calling me so i have to go and that is this is the and there are you know the whole of bhagavatam is full of all the beautiful parts and the more we think about it the more we think about krishna's past times the more we think about how he has protected his devotees and it feels it gives us so much hope for ourselves like if we surrender to this this krishna then our position is solid yeah so uh, there is something more we will discuss about the uh, the this Uh, the this aspect of lord's protection now uh, i will go to a verse and uh, that verse is the verse from gajendra past time this is the eighth canto third chapter 17 verse yeah madri kapan pashu pashu vimokshanaya muktaya bhuri karunaya namo dayaya संशयन सर्वतनुभिन मनसि प्रतीत प्रत्यक दृशे भगवते बृहत् नमस्ते मादृक प्रपन्न पशुपाश विमुक्षणाय दिस इज द प्रेयर फ्रॉम वेरी पॉपुलर वेरी फेमस वर्स फ्रॉम प्रेयर फ्रॉम गजेंद्र द एलिफेंट व्हाट ही इज सेइंग सिंस एन एनिमल सच एज मी मादृक प्रपन्न पशुपाश विमुक्षणाय madrik i'm like me elephant such an elephant an animal such as me has surrendered unto you who are supremely liberated certainly you will release me from this dangerous position indeed being extremely merciful you incessantly try to deliver me by your partial feature as paramatma as someone said before you are situated in the hearts of all embodied embodied beings 
You are celebrated as direct transcendental knowledge and you are unlimited. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you, the Supreme Personality of God. So let's see how many aspects uh, now Garuda has brought in here. I've also got the word to word translation. It's very beautiful. Say, Madrak, like me, Prapanna surrendered Pashu, an animal. Pasha, from the entangle. Pasha is like, no, Pasha is the, is the entanglement in the rope we tied up. Vimokshanaya, unto him who releases. And Muktaya, unto the Supreme. Now, the aspects is what he's saying. So, someone, how, why Krishna can protect? Because Krishna himself is free. So demigods are not free. <clears throat> you know, they have, because demigods, you know, most, most of the demigods, they are actually positioned. I think we know that. There's also someone can become that, performing certain, you know, piety in one lifetime. In some lifetime, they can be a demigod, uh, you know, owning one aspect of the material nature. But they are bound. They, are, they don't have, you know, they're not free. They're still, they're still within the, within the, material realm, yeah? And they're still within the modes. But Krishna is free, muktaya. So what is the example here? If someone, let's say, if you're tied up to a tree and we are calling for help, yeah? And we want someone to, to free us from the, from the tie. And if we call someone who's already tied, let's we call someone who says, you know, can you free me? And then he says, well, I'm also tired, so he can't free. So, so the, the hope, of you know getting freed or getting protected from the other demigods are not as much because they are themselves tied. But Krishna is muktaya, is free. And then the next point comes is even if someone is free, but that person may not be compassionate. So we are tied on a tree, and someone is passing by, and says, and we call them, you know, hey, hey, please, please, you know, help me, help me, take take me out, take you know, free me from this tree. But if they don't have the compassion, they may be, you know, insensitive. They say they walk away, all right, you know, what have I got to do with you? So they may be free, but they may not be compassionate. But Krishna is Bhuri Karunaya. Bhuri, you know, Bhuri is like very much. He's all merciful. Karuna is merciful. So he's not only that he's free, he's also Bhuri Karuna. He's very, very, very merciful. And then the third thing that happens is if someone is free and someone is compassionate, but they may not be attentive. So this is the person who was walking, we still tied on a tree, this person walking around and he's free and he has compassion, but he can't hear us. He's in his own mood, like he's an inattentive, like he's walking around, he can't see us. We should be crying for help, shouting, but the person is not attentive. The but Krishna is alayaya, he's attentive. He's, he's attentive and and then he's swamsena. In his, in his everything, he knows everything, but he's sitting in everyone's heart. So he expands himself to sit in everyone's heart, to fulfill everyone's desire, to, to be attentive. So he's, he's ex because he wants to see, see, Krishna has a choice, right? We, we may not have it, he has a choice. But his choice is always in favor of his devotees and his children, everyone. So he's attentive. So he, why is he sitting within Paramatma is within everyone's heart? Because he wants to remind us for what we have come to this earth, to this material world, to fulfill what desires, you know. And he's there to give us that, remind us of that, and remind us how we're going to fulfill that desire in the body that we are, we are, we are carrying. So he gives all that. And then if we are looking towards him, let's say we are now, okay, we don't want to have anything to do with this material world. Krishna, we only want you. Then he facilitated that. So if he, if someone wants to forget him, then he gives that facility. Yeah? So what is Sarvasya Chaham, Hridhi Sandhi Vishto, Mata, Smitir, Gyanam, Apohanam Cha. So he gives them the memory and he, apo, Gyanam, Apohanam, he also takes away the memory. So he gives the forgetfulness and he gives the remembrance. So he's sitting within the heart. So depending on ye yathama prapadyante tamsathave bhajameham. To the, in that proportion, in that, you know, that relationship that we want, to the extent we surrender, to the extent we want him to be involved in our life, to that extent he will involve in our, in our life. Yeah? That is his promise. He's, he wants to give us the free will. Out of free will, if we love him, he loves us back. So he, that's, a, that's, that's a big thing, you know. It's a, 
because someone lots of people say why well, if he knows everything that i'm going to suffer why is he allow me to suffer but no he wants us to you know love is never a, a force love is my choice he wants our love he's he's after our love is the you know he's the easy love god of love so he's always looking for love and he he that's what he appreciates so that is krishna so he has all these qualities that's why we are depending or we want to take shelter of krishna he is the bhagwan satvatam patihi and that's why he appeared so then the sages are now inquiring and to sutta goswami this krishna who is bhagwan is all these opulences who satvatam pati is the protector why did he appear in the womb of devaki <laughs> they can say you know that pretty much half of the question is answered because you know we know the rest of the story and we will probably discuss more and more as we go along but this is the the take away for today so this is bhagwan and this are these opulences and this is how he he protects his devotees this is how he is able to protect he's capable of doing it and not only is capable he also wants to do it he has the compassion and he also is attentive about our needs and that is our krishna krishna bhagwan ki jai so there's one announcement uh, maybe we can do some questions and then any questions any discussions any complaints concerns everyone's convinced <laughs> hari krishna prabhu ji yes mataji prabhu ji thank you beautifully explained all the beautiful appellances of krishna so thank you prabhu ji thank you namaste mataji thank you for your appreciation and encouragement thank you so much no questions today hari krishna prabhu ji can i request that uh, you please uh, Put the slides on um, the, the group. I think last time you did. I think we requested those. You didn't post your last ones either. Oh, sorry, sorry. I will. I will send it across. I will. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Alex. Okay, so uh, I think we can now go to the last slide. And uh, this is Devanam Prabhu has uh, asked us to to discuss this. Uh, so normally every Sunday uh, we go out for door to door book distribution. but tomorrow there is a, a special presentation in within in the haveli and that's for the chaitanya charitamrit and uh, as gaur purnima is, is is coming we want to distribute more and more uh, chaitanya charitamrit the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu so tomorrow uh, at the uh, in the atma room haveli at 1345 uh, there is a program and uh, the program there will be this is the schedule 15 minutes kirtan and there will be guru reading and japa circle and uh, children will be also um, to, will be there to keep the kids kids and adults and kids so this is the the program and vrindavan chandra prabhu will uh, will make a presentation of chaitanya charitamrit so everyone is requested to be there it will be a wonderful experience presentation there face to face also which is very nice and uh, yes you are all welcome there thank you so much and uh, thank you prabhu ji for the wonderful class thank you very so much nice. thank you so much hari krishna thank you krishna prabhu ji hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji i i have a question yes, uh, yes please speak mata ji prabhu ji in the, the the verse we read today and the in the purport the last line vasudeva is symbol of transcendental position yeah. where in the appearance of the supreme lord takes place could you just uh, yeah that's very interesting explain. thank you so much for raising that thank i was thinking you. about that one as well i can only uh, speculate i was sharing once again this is i was wondering as well wow, what does prabhupad mean there i got some some guesses and you know, we can discuss more but so there is the symbol of the transcendental position where in the appearance of the supreme lord takes place 
transcendental position. So what is the position of the, uh, the Vasudev? He is the father, you know, he appeared, he is like, the father of Krishna. And that position is, is just imagine who can be, if Krishna says, Aham Bija Pradapita. Yeah, so he says, Mamai Vamsha Sarvaloke, Bhutaloke, Sarvaloke, Mamai Vamsha, I always miss this. I am the father, seed giving father of everyone. Yeah. And uh, and what is this symbol of trans- this is transcendental? What is transcendental is beyond the, the the material vision or what is beyond it, what is transcendence? Transcendence is beyond the material vision or material uh, attributes. So this is beyond to understand that when Krishna says he is the father of everyone, how did Vasudev become father of Krishna? So that is my take on this. And the appearance of the Supreme Lord takes place. So that's, the Lord is always there. So from him, everyone is the, is the first. Ishwara Sarva Bhutana, May Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vigra, Anadi Radir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. He is the cause of all the causes. And he is the first one to appear. From whom, how does he appear from? Vasudev. So there is a, a, a transcendence. This is a, a beyond our you know uh, material understanding this is what i understand from here but if anyone else has any other thought you know you can... thank you Prabhuji. thank you <laughs> thank you so much Hare Krishna. thank you have a great sunday tomorrow and the next week thank you Prabhuji. thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for the wonderful class. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you so much today for today. Thank thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Professor Hare Krishna.